Hey, Billy Blissom with PowerCore 360. In today's video, we're going to talk about what hip and shoulder separation is, and we're going to focus on baseball pitching today. Uh, hip and shoulder separation is also oftentimes referred to as hip and shoulder dissociation. For this video, for my purposes, hip and shoulder separation is a simpler term. Here, here's what it looks like visually. If I take a stick and stick it across the front of my chest and I take a stick across the front of my hips, what you'll notice from the side view is those sticks are pointing the same direction. Now, when we're dealing with a rotational athlete like a pitcher, if we're trying to get more velocity from the use of the body, what we want is separation from the turn of the hip and, the, and separation from the turn of the shoulder. So for, with a lot of young athletes, as they're learning the pitching mechanics, pitching motion, when that front foot hits the ground, they'll rotate, but their hips and their shoulders will rotate at the same time. That causes them to lose power, rotational power, torque, arm speed, ball speed. So really what we're looking for, what it should look like is when that front foot hits the ground, we should be able to turn the lower half, the hips, away from the turn of the shoulders. So from the side view, there should be separation between the turn of the hips and turn of the shoulders. The shoulders should be being able to stay back while the hips and pelvis are turning through. From a front view, it looks like this. And as an instructor, if you're working with pitchers, you're telling your athletes, your pitchers, when that front foot hits the ground to start the rotation of their hip, and you're teaching them to keep their chest closed relative to the target or to the catcher. That's hip and shoulder separation. Now, what's hip and shoulder separation do for a pitcher? Short answer is it increases velocity. And it increases velocity from the legs, the hips, the pelvis, the core, the chest, in addition to the arms. If you don't have good hip and shoulder separation, and the majority of young athletes don't, then they're gonna, in essence, create a lot of their arm speed and ball speed from just their arm, shoulder, upper extremity. What we want for the duration and the life of their body and duration of the career is to be able to use all the big muscles of the body, the legs, the hips, the butt, the core, chest and shoulders, and arms and upper extremity. We wanna take all those forces and put them together. So in short story, we want them to be able to throw harder and tolerate throwing harder because they're using their entire body. Hip and shoulder separation will generate more power from the core to give you more arm speed and more ball velocity. Any baseball pitcher who's looking to go to the next level, you're looking to go play and pitch collegiately, especially in a Division I program, looking to go into the pros, you're going to need the velocity that's only going to come from hip and shoulder separation and not just from what you can generate from your arm and shoulder. How do you get hip and shoulder separation? Quite simply, you have to train it. Most athletes, most baseball pitchers, once again, when they learn to start working on the rotation of their body, hips and shoulders come together. They don't naturally on their own learn how to get hip and shoulder separation. It's not natural. And in fact, our bias is a lot of the traditional strength and conditioning exercises that we do in the weight room don't work rotationally for the body. And so the body, the back, the hips, everything might get really strong, but it's not working rotationally. And it doesn't teach us to separate the turn of the hips from the turn of the shoulders in the throwing movement. So we actually need to train it. Okay, so I wanna reference a study from a few years ago. It's an important study dealing with major league pitchers. And what they noticed and what they studied and saw in the research was that for a right-handed pitcher, their right arm is their throwing arm side, obviously. When they compared their ability to turn their shoulders to the right, the throwing arm side, to their non-throwing arm side, they were much more limited to their throwing arm side than they were to their non-throwing arm side. What does that mean? That means in terms of hip and shoulder separation and their ability to have hip and shoulder separation to increase arm speed coming from their entire body, they're limited, they're restricted. So this is what it would look like. Their ability to turn their shoulders back to the right and get good hip and shoulder separation was limited because they couldn't turn as far to the right as they could by turning their shoulders and hips to the left. Once again, as they start to go into a throwing motion, that limits their ability to get hip and shoulder separation. That's going to limit their power coming from the entire body versus just their arms. So how do you know if you've got good hip and shoulder separation or if you don't have any? Well, we need to test it. Let me show you how to test it. Okay, so to test your hip and shoulder separation, sit tall on a ball. The ball needs to be tall enough to where your knees and hips are at the same height. Put a ball between your legs, squeeze and hold on that ball. That's gonna lock your hips down from moving. Put a alignment stick in front of your hips, one in front of your chest. 
Turn to your right, which for a right-handed thrower is going to be your throwing arm side. Go as far as you can without strain and see how far you can turn. Right now, for me, that's it. That's as far as I can go to the right. Now I'm going to compare it to going to the left. I go further to the left. Just like the research project, excuse me, the research study I was referencing, I'm seeing the same thing as me. I hit a lot of golf balls. I'm a right-handed hitter. And just like the major league pitcher study, I'm limited going to my throwing arm side. I have a lot more hip separ shoulder separation going to my left, but I need it more to my right. So I need to work on, if this is, this is showing that I'm limited and restricted to my right. For me to pitch, if I'm a pitcher throwing with right-handed, I've got to increase my ability to turn my shoulders more to the right, get more hip and shoulder separation. If I don't have it sitting here while I'm slow and controlled, I'm certainly not going to have it when I'm standing up and I'm pitching and trying to create velocity. Okay, so I know I'm limited uh, with my shoulder turned to the right, so I'm limited in my hip and shoulder separation. I've got basically a band on now. I've got a torso harness on. I've got a band hooked to my left underarm. It's hooked at chest level behind me, and in fact, it's pulling on me. So if I relax, this band's going to pull me backwards. If I sit tall, squeeze the ball, and I rotate to my right, what's going to start happening is this band is helping me rotate to the right. It's going to turn me in to the restrictions I have with tight muscles, which are just shut down and won't let me turn. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to integrate a little breathing with the pull of the band. I'm going to take a deep breath in through my nose. I'm going to exhale. And as I exhale, the pull of that band, when I exhale, is going to help me rotate my chest to the right. I'm going to do that two more times. Deep breath in through my nose. Exhale. Let that band turn me. I'm not going to force it. I'm just going to take what it's going to give me. And as I exhale, those muscles are going to release for me. So that's three reps. Very slow. I'm going to do three sets of three reps. Go back to my beginning position. I turn back to my right. Deep breath in. Exhale. Turn. Two more. So you can see how much it's starting to turn my chest and shoulders. Do one more set of three. Turn to the right. Deep breath in. Exhale. Turn. Two more. So that's what we call the mobility piece. And all we're doing is just opening up the muscles. And if you have what we call a functional deficit, as you exhale, and, and as you exhale, the band's gonna allow your body and your chest and shoulders to turn. If it doesn't, it's not a functional deficit. It might be bone on bone. That's not anything you're gonna fix with this. But the majority of athletes we see, they have a functional deficit, which will open up very quickly when they integrate a little breathing with a little pull of the band. That's what we call mobility training. That's going to open it up. Now I'm going to go to what we call strengthening or stability training. I'm taking the band. I'm changing it from my left underarm to my right underarm. That, in essence, now puts the band and wants to rotate in the other direction. But I'm now going to do some resistance training, some strength training. I was resistant to the right, and now I've, that I've opened up that new range of motion over there, I'm going to be weak in that range, so I have to actually strengthen my ability to get into that range. So I'm going to get to the end range, take a deep breath in, exhale and turn. And now as I'm turning, hey, that band doesn't want to let me turn. I'm having to use my core muscles and my deep spinal rotator muscles, right, which really need to be strengthened here and, and help my ability to get over there. So I'm going to take it for 6 to 10 seconds and hold it. And I'm literally only going to do this. This is an activation protocol. I'm going to do it three reps, holding each one for 6 to 10 seconds. Deep breath in. Exhale, hold it at that end range of motion and just breathe normally. Six to 10 seconds, I'm holding it. I would repeat that normally one more time. And then when I take the band off, in essence, what's happening is, I now have the ability, man, my chest and shoulders just wants to turn to the right. If I go back to my measurement from where I was before, and I recheck my hip and shoulder separation. Before I was limited to my right, I only had maybe 25 or 30 degrees. Now that I've opened it up with the band and I've actually turned those muscles on, I've activated them. And right now I can turn way over there. Before this point thing was maybe pointing outside my knee. Now I can get it inside my knee. So I've got a probably a good 60, 70 degrees 
of rotation now in my thoracic spine. In other words, when I stand up now, I should have the ability to have more hip and shoulder separation when we're talking about pitching here today. So when that front foot comes down, I have a lot more ability now for my lower half to start to rotate through and I can keep my other upper half closed, right? So I'm getting more hip and shoulder separation, a lot more than I did a few minutes ago, simply by activating and turning on the right muscles in my thoracic spine. That's how we build it with the upper half. I'll show you how to do it with the lower half. Okay, now for the lower half. I have a hip harness on, I've got a band hooked to my right hip, and I've got a band heading towards home plate, right? As a right-handed thrower, I'm now gonna go through, I've already activated and opened up my shoulder turn to the right, sitting on the ball. Now I'm standing in a much more in a pitching posture, and I'm gonna work on, you're the camera, basically you're towards third baseline if I'm coming out of the stretch, and I'm essentially gonna go from my balance to my stride position, as I go from stride, I'm going to start working on the lower half, the hip turning, right? But I'm trying to keep my chest and shoulders pointed over towards third baseline. I'm trying to keep it closed, right? By doing that, I'm starting to get that feeling of hip and shoulder separation. I can do this four or five times. I can hold it six to ten seconds at that end range. And right now, I'm strengthening the muscles from my front leg, my hips, my core, my chest and shoulders and scaps all to learn how to hold that position. I can then take a lighter band, the orange band is, is too much to begin with. I could take a black band and go with a lighter band and I could, <clears throat> excuse me, I could start going through the throwing motion from the stretch. I could go to balance, to stride, and actually start to work on the throwing motion and feel what it feels like with the band on, what it feels like to get hip and shoulder separation and the sequence of, sequence of the lower half working, the hips turning, my chest staying closed and start to feel what that's like. I can throw some easy throws, almost just like playing catch with the band on. Then I can take the band off, and the athlete pitcher at this point in time should really have a good feel now for how to go through those same motions and throw and feel what's going on in terms of hip and shoulder separation. Front, front foot hitting, the hips starting to rotate through, the upper half staying closed, and feel the whip that's being created from the ground up with the right sequence. Really cool, they'll love the feeling. It, uh, it'll get so much easier for them and they'll feel what it feels like to throw with their entire body versus trying to muscle everything with just their arm and shoulder. Using hip and shoulder separation, uh, the pitching performance is gonna be greater and they're gonna be healthier long-term. If you're interested in further information about one of our webinars, one of our clinics, to work on hip and shoulder separation, please contact me at billy at powercore360.com. If you like this video, please like it down below. If you want further information about our products, webinars, or clinics, please look at powercore360.com.